Hello and welcome to my first video blog. Now this is simply going to be a presentation that I gave in school a few weeks ago. And here it is, Hatseg Island. Now I've got a map of prehistoric Europe and North Africa, and Hatseg Island would today be in southwest Romania, the Hatseg region. And here it is depicted here. Now this was around during the end of the time of the dinosaurs or as scientists call it, the late Cretaceous, from the Cenomonian to the Maastrichtian Epoch. The size of the island is estimated to be anywhere between 7,500 square kilometres and 200,000 square kilometres. So it really is quite a range and maybe some more studying needs to go into it. And on this one island, the paleontologists have studied the many dinosaurs that lived here and they evolved into many strange shapes and sizes because they were on this island and they were separated from the larger environments of greater islands like North America where you find Tyrannosaurus and Europe where you find various large sauropods such as Cetiosaurus, although that was from the Jurassic, so forget the Cetiosaurus. But I'm going to be starting with a sauropod. I'm going to be starting with a close relative of Argentinosaurus. Argentinosaurus was, of course, the biggest dinosaur ever. It weighed around 75 tons and perhaps reached to lengths of 40 meters. Here it is. It's called Magurosaurus. It was essentially a miniature version of most sauropods. Here it is. It was no bigger than a pony. And it was discovered in 1915 by a prominent paleontologist from the local region. It was in the Titanosaurid family, so despite being incredibly small for a sauropod, it was still very closely related to Argentinosaurus. Here we have another similar dinosaur to Magurosaurus. It's called Telmatosaurus. It was a miniature version of a larger dinosaur, this time a miniature version of a famous hadrosaur called Edmontosaurus. It was the key prey of Tyrannosaurus rex. This was this was about 5 metres long, whereas the larger cousin of it was about 10 metres long, big enough for a T-Rex to feast on. Now here is a slightly strange case. It is a miniature version of another dinosaur. This is essentially a smaller Iguanodontid, such as, and that included creatures such as Iguanodon and Mutabarosaurus. But it also shows that it is halfway between the Iguanodontids and Hypsilophodontids, which included creatures like Othnelia and Thessalosaurus. So perhaps in Hatseg Island, there is evidence to show evolution between two rather different creatures. We have the Iguanodontids going one way, and the Hypsilophodontids going the other. So perhaps this is a slightly larger Hypsilophodontid, but it has been put in its own family, called the Rhabdodontids because this creature was called Raptodon Priscus. Now I'm going to talk about a predator from the island. This is Balea Bondok. It's named after a mythical Romanian dragon, and it's my favourite dinosaur. It is part of the Dromaeosaurid family, which contained the famous dinosaur Velociraptor, and this was a very close relative of it, and it was only discovered in the year 2010. But, what's special about it, not the size, I mean, it, it was rather stocky, but not, nothing too different from, Vel from Velociraptor, but it's claws. Because Velociraptor, as I'm sure we all know, it had that sickle-shaped claw that it would use to attack its prey. But Balea Bondok had two of those. Now, there are different theories about this. S some, some people think that they may have been used to help with tearing the flesh of the prey. There's another interesting theory that uh, states that they would use them to help climb trees and drag prey into them as modern leopards do, but this remains a mystery. Now, despite being so perfectly adapted for killing and taking prey, this was not the top predator on Hatseg Island. And here is the top predator it wasn't a dinosaur, it was in fact a pterosaur, these you probably know as flying dinosaurs, 
Well, they weren't dinosaurs, but they were cousins of dinosaurs. Here it is, it's called Hatsicopteryx bambina. The name literally translates as Hatseg winged monster. But due to its enormous size here, compared to a modern giraffe, it had a wingspan of 12 meters. And even though the, the uh, fossils discovered are only fragmented, it is known how big it is because scientists before have taken partial fossils of pterosaurs and managed to calculate how big the wingspan was, only to later have it confirmed by more complete fossils. But how did Hatsigoptrix hunt? Well, it's known from trace fossils discovered in South Korea in 2002 that pterosaurs were able to easily walk along the ground using their hands on their wings as front feet. But why wasn't Hatsigoptrix able to simply swoop down and grab, say, a young Magiosaurus in its mouth and fly off with it? Well, in the beak there is a lack of shock absorbing muscle or joints and these two lackings indicate that it wouldn't have been able to cope with the impact of grabbing a dinosaur. So therefore it is thought that Hatsigoptrix would simply walk along, grab some slow moving prey and pick it up and simply swallow it whole. But what was it that drove the evolution of these many strange and varied creatures? Well, it was simply the fact that they lived in this completely unique environment of Hatseg Island. It was unlike any other in the dinosaur world, and that made them change completely. This is something that is shown in many other cases. For example, in the Galapagos, there are giant versions of tortoises. Or indeed, in Crete, until about 100,000 years ago to around 10,000 years ago, there were small elephants the size of dogs. And very famously, in New Zealand, a case of island gigantism, much like Hatsigopteryx, birds managed to evolve into truly gargantuan sizes, resulting in the biggest bird to ever live, the moa. Well, that uh, concludes my presentation. Now, there will be more videos to come, hopefully. But uh, in the meantime, feel free to like, subscribe, maybe comment or add questions, and other videos that are to come. They won't be. They won't all be lectures. There'll be uh, maybe various rants and comedy things. A few just li just me listing interesting facts. So please feel free to do all of those things, and uh, hopefully I'll be making some more of these.